I'm Frank Payne, biology teacher, reptile breeder, and former zookeeper. I'm here to share with you my passion and experience working with these beautiful and fascinating animals. Welcome to Living Art. Hey guys, it's Frank Payne again. I'm coming at you with another video. This time focusing on this little beauty right here. This is a Peter's Banded Skink. These are one of my very favorite lizards. I say that about everything. Everything I keep is my favorite lizard. I can't help it. But if you were to look at this animal up close, I'll try and get a little closer for you. Um, it's really easy to see why this is a personal favorite of mine. This is one of the most, the word that comes to mind is charismatic. This is one of the most charismatic lizards um, that I've ever worked with, that I've ever seen. They're just absolutely amazing. Look at that face. Beautiful orange and black coloration as well. I just love these things to death. They are one of the most docile animals that you can work with. Once established, they are really, really hardy and easy to keep too. Um, they almost seem like the perfect pet lizard because they really don't get much bigger than this. Some guys do get bigger, but not a whole lot bigger than this right here. They seem like the perfect pet lizard, except there's one thing. Nobody can breed them. Nobody in the United States has bred this animal, this species. As far as I know, there's only two people in the entire world that has, have ever bred them, two gentlemen in Asia. Um, we're in a, even still, I think it's only been a few times. Um, so their, their secrets have not been cracked, but I do think that if we can get these guys captive bred, they can be one of the very, very best pet lizards out there. And I've devoted myself to doing so. I've got myself a nice little group of about a dozen of them hopefully more eventually, um, but I'm playing around with them. I'm manipulating some conditions. I want to try to get these guys to breed because right now they're just imported by the hundreds and thousands and, and they're quite cheap to get and they come in in pretty poor condition and, and, and it's a bit of a shame because usually most of those do not survive. But if we can get these as captive bred, man, wouldn't that be a stunning animal? This, this one right here is pretty much perfect. I've had this animal, this particular one, for around a year or so. And, it, and it's flawless. It's, this does not look like a wild caught animal, even though it is. Um, and so hopefully, hopefully I and maybe some other people can get these guys going. So I just want to um, share with you a little bit how I'm keeping them because I do feel I'm very successful keeping them. I've been keeping uh, Peter's Bandit Skinks for about three, four uh, years right now. And I want to keep doing it. And I feel like what, I ha what I'm doing for them works really well in terms of keeping. Hopefully one day it'll work for breeding. All right, let's take a look at this animal and we can get an idea of how it lives. It is very smooth and shiny. These scales, I mean, it's perfectly smooth. You're not gonna peel the scales back by going up and down on it. Um, if you look at the side of the head also, you see that you won't notice an ear opening. There is a flap of scales that cover it. And that is very common in lizards that are fossorial. Now, fossorial means that they spend most of their time under the ground. This species is primarily nocturnal, active at night, or crepuscular, active at dawn and dusk. So during the day, you don't see them very often, but at dawn and dusk and throughout the night, they are quite active and entertaining little lizards. Um, most of the time, though, is spent underneath the ground. Um, what I provide for them in captivity, as I'll show you in a little bit, is a sandy soil type mixture. Not pure sand, but sand mixed with soil and some gravel and some mulch. But they, they're they very, very good diggers. Um, they don't have a shovel nose like a sandfish skink does. They don't have any fringing or webbing on their toes. So they aren't quite as evolved for straight sand living as some other species of lizard that are fossorial. Um, but they are still very, very well equipped and are excellent burrowers. So this is how I'm keeping them. Uh, this is a rack system, uh, Vision 70 is the, the size rack, CB70 I think it's called. It's basically about three feet long, about a foot and a half wide and six, seven, eight inches tall. So about half of the tub is filled with this sandy soil mixture down to about three or four inches. Now you notice it clumps a little bit because I do keep half of the soil pretty damp, not bone dry. I think that's a mistake. They, I think they do want some 
some humidity in their soil. Now towards the back, it is much, much drier. So I have a heat cord running underneath the enclosure all the way in the back, all the way to the front, just for about a third or a half of the tub in the, of the enclosure. So that way, by doing so, by keeping the front half a little bit more damp and humid and the back more dry, but heat running the entire length, this means that the animals have all sorts of choices, even in a tub system like this. They can choose to be warm and humid, cool and humid, cool and dry, or warm and dry. So they have quite a bit of choices here. They do spend most of the time just buried in the soil, but I have provided them with some, some hides as well for climbing on and underneath. These are like irrigation pipes um, that I've just cut in half. You can see there was a little guy right here. <laughs> so it is the daytime, so they are buried right now. Very simple setup. I do provide a water bowl. They will drink. I've seen them do it, especially when they're freshly wild caught and come in dehydrated. I have a food bowl. There I have some super worms in there. They eat mostly insects. I feed them super worms and crickets and mealworms and dubia roaches. They will occasionally take some cat food or some dog food wet. Uh, they eat some fruit and some veggies sometimes, but they are primarily insectivores. And I think that's, that's, I don't know for sure, but that is mostly what they're eating in the wild, I would imagine. So it's a very simple setup, um, but it works really well for them for keeping them. And the two gentlemen that did breed them in Asia, they keep them in rack systems uh, smaller than this, I believe even. Um, so I did wanna try and replicate that because of the security of the rack. Um, often um, get some more shy animals to feel secure and to, to do well. In terms of temperatures, I try to provide a hot spot of around 90, 95, and a cool side down to about 70, 75. And I do vary that throughout the year. I'm guessing and thinking that is one of the keys to breeding them is that they are not a straight tropical species. They are going to experience some variation throughout the seasons. And like many skinks, many lizard species, um, I think that might be key to getting them to reproduce. So I have cooled them quite a bit in the winter uh, and just now starting to warm them up. Hopefully we'll get to see some breeding activity. There's a beautiful little one right there. And it goes to hide, starting to shed a little bit. So you can see what I was talking about before, how they are just such a mellow lizard. How even my daughter here, who's five, as long as children are gentle with them and slow moving, they stay pretty calm. And I've never, ever had a Peter's banded skink bite. It's unbelievable. One of the reasons why this species has proven difficult to breed is that they are very difficult to sex like so many different skink species. Um, there's not a whole lot of sexual dimorphism going on with them, meaning it's hard to tell the difference between the sexes. I believe this is a pair. If you zoom in on the head here and take a look, this animal right here in my right hand I believe is a male. This one I believe is a female. If you look at the heads, the male head is a little squirmy, significantly wider than the females. Not hugely so, but it is noticeable. The female's body is wider. The male's body is a little bit skinnier, very squirmy right now, and more tubular. And that's very typical of skinks as well, like blue tongues, where females tend to be wider and rounder and males more tubular. Um, there's some possibility of taking a look at the scalation around the vents. I'll insert some pictures in. I've had some conversations with people on Facebook about that. Um, so that might be a way to tell. I, I have a feeling that to really like truly tell besides seeing mating behavior is we might need to have some, some x-rays, some radiography done on these animals to truly determine whether it's a male or female because you know I've seen so many different pictures on the internet of males versus females. And some people say that they can pop the hemipenes, um, but then th this species, like others, I've also heard that, that the females have hemiclitoris, uh, which is basically a, a false 
hemipenes. So sometimes a female could be popped to look like a male, but it's not actually a male. So I'm pretty skeptical of that, maybe. Um, but it's definitely difficult to sex these guys to determine whether you have or male or a female. So just another little wrinkle to trying to get these amazing animals to breed. Guys, I hope you enjoyed hearing me talk a little bit about and showing you my Peter's Banded Skinks. They are an absolutely wonderful species of lizard and they deserve more attention in the hobby. They make great pets and most people just get them as pets, as one or two. But because they are only wild caught, I think it is so important that more people take them seriously as a, a, a potential breeding project. Get yourself a good number of them if you're able to devote the space. They really don't take up that much space. Um, and this is something that really needs to be cracked because they are such an amazing and perfect lizard. And if we can figure out how to breed them, what a what an amazing uh, addition to our hobby. So I hope you enjoyed these little guys, and I hope you look into them a little bit more. Thank you. Um. So these branded skates are um, black and yellow and they're very beautiful. So if you put them in the sand with water and if they lay their eggs in the water, that makes it softer with the moisture in the water. In the sand, right? Yeah. Yeah. I said sand. Yeah, I know. Yeah, these wizards are really awesome. And my dad found these in Australia. Different Africa, honey. Different Africa. Yeah, close. close. Good guess. Mm. Good job. <laughs>